Let's go ahead and get going. So I do appreciate everybody taking the time to come in here and uh, learn more about content creation and what they can do to better themselves. Today, we're going to be going over quality over quantity in content creation. Now, you're probably thinking you, in this fast paced world of content creation, <clears throat> there's often this alluring temptation to just create and share as much content as possible. But the more that you create, the, ch the more chances you have of blowing up, right? You know, that's, that's what everybody thinks. But honestly, there, that's, that's the biggest trap within content creation. And, and I absolutely have started reevaluating my content because I was the same way I was creating clip after clip after clip. And I was saying to myself, Hey, I'm going to post these on these days and these days and these days and just shooting out all this content. And then I started looking back at it and realizing I needed to reevaluate it and put more quality within my content. Now, the reason we're going over quantity versus quality is obviously everybody knows quantity is, you know, just the number of what you have uh, content wise. But quality, on the other hand, it's the excellence, the value, and the impact of your content. And it's just about creating content that resonates deeply with your audience and leaves a lasting impression. So uh, definitely keep that in mind whenever you're <clears throat> looking in to reevaluate your content. Try to, try to make something more quality than just obviously shitting out a bunch of a bunch of videos trying to push them out and trying to get recognized because one of the things you need to realize is with that quality you're going to bring in your personality with your content and the reason that we're bringing personality in into this is because with the quality you're going to see a huge power and increase within yourself and your personality and it's going to bring audience members back to you if they vibe with your personality now <clears throat> one of the one of the most potent assets you possess as a person is your personality and it's not just what you create it's how you create it and more importantly who you are <clears throat> and you're probably saying what can your personality create with your content well for one you can create relatability and connection with your audience um, you'll be able to stand out in the crowd while there's other people who are just putting in their gameplay, uh, you can build a trust and you can build trust and loyalty within your audience. And your personality can honestly be a storyteller within your content, which is absolutely something I've been looking into doing more. I want to start putting my personality more into my content because I, I feel like it's I feel like there's not not much of it in my past videos, but in these recent videos that I've been creating, I've been seeing more of my personality come out with my content, you know, making very meme like content videos for my gameplay. Um, <clears throat> but you'll be able to evolve and grow as a creator as well uh, with taking that into consideration as well. Um, you'll also be able to discover your niche appeal. So with your personality, you'll be able to tell, okay, what, what is my niche? What things do I love that I can implement into my content to give it that quality? And, you know, I, I've been looking into <clears throat> honestly talking about my PC build because I take pride in my PC build. I run off of a single, single PC build. You know, it's a, it's a 73700X and a 2070 Super. And that, that build has literally gotten me through all of my content my my streaming i i honestly have gotten to the point to where i don't even know if i want to do a dual pc setup <clears throat> because of how powerful this is but i'm honestly not sure i i'm i'm contemplating it but we'll we'll get there when we get there that's going to be a long road um <clears throat> but most importantly you'll be staying true to yourself with putting your personality into your content 
And I want you all to remember that authenticity is the key to this. It's going to be the key to making your content grow and making you grow as a content creator. <clears throat> One of the things that I definitely recommend when creating content is just avoiding raw gameplay. Now, raw gameplay is simply where you're just playing a game, no commentary or context, and people post a lot of this, and it's just an easy way to create content. And the, the bad thing about it is it's going to often fall short in terms of engaging and captivating your audience. Many cons will come into place and make your content suffer a huge, a huge, huge hit if you keep taking this route. <clears throat> some of the things that a lot of, or well, some of the cons that affect your content if you just post this raw gameplay there's lack of context, which is going to cause a disinterest and confusion within your audience or viewers that find your content. Um, you're going to miss a lot of opportunities, too, with, with storytelling and creating that quality within your content, something that will really resonate with them. Um, like I said, you'll see minimal engagement. <clears throat> and your videos will end up getting stuck in that algorithm that's pretty much an oversaturated abyss is what I call it. And it's it's that algorithm where it's literally just gameplay. You can probably barely hear the game, but then they just put a tick uh, the trending TikTok sound over it, and you can barely hear anything that's going on. You know that's <clears throat> that's one thing that's that will really kill your videos if you keep continuing that route. And I think that's that really puts it in there for a missed opportunity for commentary, you know, sharing your thoughts, your strategies and reactions within the gameplay that you're wanting to show within your content and <clears throat> raw gameplay often limits your ability to repurpose your content for different platforms or formats with, with commentary. You can create reels, tutorials, shorts using the same footage. I mean, obviously you can use the same raw gameplay and post it on, TikTok, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, but it, it would it would honestly be much better, more redefining for your for your platform and your brand to to be able to go above the limits of just raw gameplay and really take into consideration how you can spice up your clips and promote them properly on the correct on the correct platforms and making sure that they actually reach those audience members that you're trying to aim for. And <clears throat> another thing that comes into that is quality editing and quality editing is going to be the key to redefining your content into a polished, engaging and professional final product. Your editing is the magic behind the scenes that can elevate your content to new heights. I mean, even, even if you want to just, make make a video about you editing content that you know setting up a camera behind you as you're editing or or you know going along the lines of actually doing how to's on how you edit your videos you know that that could be something that could benefit you within your content but with properly editing your clips and adding flair to them you'll be able to bring in a returning audience with these helpful tips in your editing and a lot of this is going to be OBS affiliated because I see a lot of a lot of creators on TikTok and shorts who post the most pixelated videos. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'll, I'll tell you right now, it irks me. And going back and looking at my clips that were pixelated like that, I can't believe I never took the time to actually edit them this way. And one of the things you can do is first off, we're going to start with visual enhancement. So lighting, color correction, and visual effects that can definitely make your content more attractive and obviously not as bland and, you know, half-assed at that point. Um, maybe removing flaws or distractions that eliminate, you know, such as eliminating mistakes, uh, awkward pauses, background noise, or even distractions that are behind you. You know, there's, there's plenty of ways within editing that you're able to remove the most simplistic things that are affecting your content. And another thing you can look into is introductions and endings.
that can help set up the tone and plot of the clips you create and grab the attention and grab the attention of your audience. Um, another thing to look into is the consistency within your editing styles and branding. Um, this will definitely establish a recognizable brand for you and your content, and it will start appealing to more of a general audience and get them returning to you. <clears throat> Accessibility with subtitles can also make your content more accessible to a wider audience, including those with hearing impairments or language barriers. Um, the last thing I'm going to touch on with the quality editing is fine tuning your OBS and slob settings to ensure that when you work on clips, there's not pixelation or poor quality to that actual gameplay. That's, that's the toughest part about this is there's not, there's a lot of creators out there who don't know how to exactly set up the settings for their OBS or slobs properly. And, you know, a lot of those creators that are looking to become full-time content creators sometimes don't know where to start. They don't know to, you know, go to YouTube and type in best OBS settings, best slob settings, or look at the specs on their computer to see what their, what their OBS and slobs can handle. You know, it, it's gonna, it's going to strongly affect that gameplay that you're wanting to try to promote. So I, I think there's there's that situation in which people have to honestly reevaluate how their stream looks, you know, do test streams and make sure that your settings are up to par to make sure that your content looks great when you're uploading it to other platforms to promote. <clears throat> and the last thing I'm really going to touch on here is time and resources with editing. Now, we all know that time and resources for quality content is, I mean, whenever you're trying to make high quality content, you're, you're going to be high in demand for that time and resources. And when you're a content creator, that's a price that you have to be willing to pay if you want to be a successful content creator. You know, you're, whenever there's new content creators that are coming out, they're probably thinking, Oh, I don't have the software. I don't have a PC. I don't know what my settings should be. I don't know where to start. I don't have time. You know, at that point, you have two choices. You know, you can you can either shelf the idea of becoming a content creator or you do your research on where to start or better yet, keep coming back to these workshops where we are looking to better content creators every single week as much as possible with the knowledge that we find. And that's something that we really take pride in here at Triple Alliance. We, you know, we're giving tips and tricks and tools to you basically for free on how to become content creators. And, you know, some things to take into consideration here with those time and resources, you know, those that don't have a PC, <clears throat> if you're, if you're streaming on console, you don't need a $5,000 PC setup. Um, you know, best thing you can do is do a budget build and get a capture card and start from there and keep, keep looking in to those different, to those different how to's and, you know, what do I need? You know, those different resources. And honestly, if you're, if you're confused and don't know where to start, you can always come to the, to me as a content creation director and, I can definitely pay, you know, pave the way for you and get you started on what I think the basics would be and what the minimum requirements would be to actually get started with creating content from streaming on console. You know, there's and then there's people who don't know who don't know what software they need. And there's plenty of free software to work on clips like DaVinci or CapCut. DaVinci, I used to take pride in DaVinci before I switched to Adobe. Um, it was, I, I, yeah, yeah, I see, I see you. I, I see you T T you hate Adobe so much. Don't you? <laughs> um, but honestly with DaVinci or CapCut, you can make your clips shine. And as I said earlier, we do weekly workshops. So not only can I help you learn, but I can learn more about the software itself that you're wanting to learn that you think would help better your clips. And 
I am so sorry. My throat's all stopped up. But anyway, um, on to my next subject. If you if you feel like you don't have time, you make the time to create your content and put the effort in to make that quality in there. You know, if you don't know where to start, create a schedule, even if it has to be down to the minute on when you can work on your content. You know, for take me, for example, I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays, along with working a full time job and managing a YouTube channel and a, a podcast and creating my content and spending time with my wifey, obviously. <clears throat> but I'm still able to have that free time. You know, that's it's it's always about putting in the time to create that quality as well. You know, there are. There are 24 hours in a day you can and the average human spends six to eight hours sleeping and eight hours working. That's still eight other hours in the day to chase your goals and make that quality content. That's going to help you find that audience that appeals to your niche and pave the way for you to becoming a full time content creator. Now. I don't know about you guys, but I, I will always be taking these tools that I learn more from myself, but hopefully you guys are learning as well. And I'm going to always be amping my content and trying to become a successful creator. And I hope you guys do the same. So um, that is today's workshop. Um, I really appreciate everybody that stopped in here. Do you guys have any questions at all? Uh, yeah, I got a question. Okay. Might. Yeah, what's up? So, um, so I've been doing. So basically, I've been my story. Basically, I started out streaming during COVID. I was streaming, okay. you know, eight hours a day, you know, seven days a week, pretty much. Really didn't do too hot there. Uh, so I stopped doing that, just mental health wise, for that. Um, and then I started, you know, getting back in, and you know, I had taken TikTok off of my phone because you know all the Speeding us with that, uh, and gone over to YouTube Shorts. Which uh, which platform do you personally like? See better success in, or is there a platform that you would say like is better to focus time into? Honestly, that would work. Honestly, the the best app to focus on is going to be TikTok. Okay. Uh, and I know you said you deleted it because you. You said it's shady. You you said you feel yeah, like I got it's some security concerns. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of people that did. Um, I honestly believe that <clears throat> taking the same the same clip that you put a lot of editing into uh, that that mm -hmm. brings back to one of the points that I made with with making high high quality clips like that. You can definitely repurpose it for both platforms if you're promoting on YouTube Shorts. And so on, I noticed when I moved over to YouTube Shorts, I had better engagement overall. Mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, yeah, or absolutely. Like a more specific engagement with it. So I wasn't sure if that's something you have seen. With yeah, it or you know, anything I, like that. So it just really depends. It it really honestly depends on the the algorithm that day and the time that you post. Um, who's all active on YouTube Shorts? Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, it, it honestly blows my mind because there's times where I posted my clips on YouTube shorts and they would get, you know, some would get 200, 300 views, but then some of them will get over 2,000, 3,000 views. And this is coming from me personally, in my opinion, I spend more time on TikTok than I do YouTube shorts. Really? And... That's just because I don't see anybody promoting, hey, I'm posting YouTube shorts. Um, a lot of these a lot of these creators, um, let's just take it's Timmy, for example. So he has mm -hmm. multiple he has multiple channels. You know, he has his main channel where he posts his, where he posts his Apex content. He's got it's Timmy two where he posts his, you know, other content. And then he's got it's Timmy shorts where he just posts nothing but his shorts. Um, that gets a lot of engagement, but that's also because he has a huge following and, yeah. but not only that, he posts it on Instagram and TikTok as well to get more of an engagement out of those clips. Um, mm. 
So it's just all in perspective on what your preference is. I mean, you, you'll probably see a huge turnaround on YouTube shorts. Uh, but it, if it were me, I, I would highly recommend repurposing that, that content for multiple platforms to oh, get okay. better engagement and bring them back just to one single place, which is your, your streaming channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause the other question that I have is I enjoy streaming, but 90% like, like you said, we're talking about personality. Yeah. My personality, 99% of the time violates tic or TikTok and Twitch's guidelines. So I have recently moved over to kick to fix that. <laughs> okay. But, um, um, it's more of like, you know, that question of, you know, if I'm doing like shorts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. is it better, would you say, to focus more on getting, you know, like, because I know with shorts and all that, you have to post like pretty consistently in order to stay relevant within that algorithm. So uh, it, yeah. would, it, would it be better to focus, like, I've got, you know, maybe two, three hours, you know, per week that I can focus on, you know, editing and all that. Mm -hmm. Would it be better to focus that time into more like, you know, 10 minute videos for YouTube or, or um, something like that? I think it would be, it, it would probably be better to focus that two to three hours on posting short form content because short form content is going to be what helps resonate with audiences on those other platforms. Cause <clears throat> let's let's just put this for an example. Whenever you're scrolling on TikTok, if mm -hmm. if there's if there's a content creator on there that you find that you like, do you go out of your way to go follow them on every single platform? Um yeah, I'd say so. You say so? Because a lot of the general audience they're just going to follow you on that one platform and maybe your streaming platform. And that's a yeah. hard if, because sometimes people, the, the general audience with TikTok, let's, let's be real. It, they, it, there's a lot of people with short attention span on there. Yeah. So the thing is short form content, something that really resonates with them in like 30 seconds to a minute is going to be what helps pave the way for you as a creator. And, okay. it, you know, catching their attention just for that short time and then being like, hey, I like this guy. I'm going to follow him. Hopefully more of his content pops up on my for you page, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, more or less whenever they follow you, they're going to go over to their following tab on TikTok and, you know, find you on there or even search for your profile personally. Look for more of your look for more of your content on there. All right. All right. See what you're saying with that. Yeah. So it's just all about appealing to a short attention span whenever it comes to whenever it comes to being a content creator, especially when you're posting short form content. It's just got to be something that catches their eye and they're like, oh, hey, I can waste, you know, it, it's pretty shitty, but this is how they look at it. I can, it, you know, like unconsciously, they, they say, I'm going to waste my 30 seconds watching this guy. He's pretty funny. And then follow mm -hmm. them. like it's 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 a pretty shitty way to look at it. But I but then they end up finding out what type of person you are. And then they're like, oh, hey, I actually like this guy. I'm going to keep following him, keep liking his content, supporting. Yeah, it's just it's just all about posting that short form content. Like, honestly, be ready to not expect a return in the beginning. But as yeah. you keep on posting content in that short form and staying relevant, then you're definitely going to see a huge return in that. All right, all right. And the other question I have, since I'm, I'm going to assume most of y'all are on Kick now, yeah. Um, what's the best way to get um, like clips and stuff out of that to you know throw into Premiere Pro or DaVinci or you know any of them? Do you stream on a PC? Uh, yeah. Okay. The best thing I can um, tell you on that is recording while you stream. Okay. Because I know, because I know, catching clips on Kick is pretty finicky at the moment since they're still in beta. And mm. if you record while you're streaming, 
in my opinion, it helps keep that high quality in too. So you're not worrying about downloading a clip that probably looks washed or grayed out or discolored from from kicks aspect because i know that was something that happened on my twitch channel and then i've always kind of been hesitant on downloading clips from my streams as well so i record and stream at the same time and then i just go and pick those clips out from my stream because I, I guess like I'm, I upgraded my PC a little bit, so I'm not sure if I'll have the same issue. But when I had uh, Ryzen Five, yeah, I could not record and stream at the same time; it would crash OBS every time I did that. Mm -hmm. so I'm hoping with an i9 it won't do that, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, more or less, it's <clears throat> it's. Well, let me think. Let me ask you this: Have you have you actually tinkered with your OBS settings or slob settings? Um, I had your IT tech support gene help me out with that. Oh, okay, so whenever streaming on OBS, you don't really wor have to worry much about your CPU because OBS only takes ten percent of it, right. and and that's something just to take into consideration there whenever you're streaming it's not going to be any issue to record at all because i'll tell you right now i i run a like i said earlier i run a 73700x and a 2070 super and i record and stream at the same time on apex and apex is a huge game and a lot of people yeah. have streaming issues on there and i stream on the best quality too because i want my quality to be the best whenever i'm editing clips i don't want it to look pixelated I don't want it to look discolored. I want it to look absolutely perfect. If I if I was watching somebody who had my gameplay, that's that's the way I look at it. I would, you know, want to appreciate how much effort they put into their content and their right. and their stream quality. Sorry, right, I know it sounds like a stupid question, but from moving a back over or moving to kick is a little a little different than Twitch where it would nicely pull my clips for me with how yeah I yeah that's that's the unfortunate side of moving to kick um mm. but i'm sure within you know the coming months i know train wreck and eddie are really hard at work on implementing better ways to get clips so mm -hmm. but uh don't take that you know take that with a grain of salt i don't know what they have to offer i'm in the kick discord but I have it mm. muted, obviously, because it goes off like crazy. And yeah. I literally just go in there every now and again just to see what updates they have. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, I understand what you're saying. So I'm just trying to trying to get back into this because it's been a little bit since I've been doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is... Uh, Triple Alliance is the best way to start because... I was barely streaming, barely making content, and if it wasn't for Delphi here, who lit a fire under my ass back in January, mm -hmm. I I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today. All right, all right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions at all? I got a couple for you, Shane. Oh, Lord, here we go. Here we go. The perfectionist has the freaking spotlight right now. Perfectionist. No, it was stuff I was going to talk to you about at some point anyways, but you kind of brought it up in this workshop. Uh, so as far as quality goes, are you just talking about the production value or are you talking about the context itself or a combination of both? Combination like, of both. Take somebody like Carter PCs, for example. He has made most of his videos and even maybe some, most of them still with his phone on front camera. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Take somebody you take somebody that's a genius like that and do you think he still survives in a day and age of tiktok right now where tiktok has seemingly actually became a mini form of youtube because i mean they're kind of wanting to push longer form even though i do think short form is still king um but they're obviously promoting and saying that they're pushing long form and we mm -hmm. have seen gradually over the years that tiktok quality has gotten better and better and better so yeah he's just hit it at the right time or do you think if you have really good context and really good, you know, like opinions like uh, Carter PCs has, or at least stirs up the community, you know, you don't necessarily have to have that production quality. 
I think it's I think it's a matter of the 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 context of the video as well. I you know I'm I'm looking at his profile right now, and you know he, yeah, he does just film from from his phone, yeah. and you know that's that's a lot of that's that's a lot of the things or well that's one thing that a lot of people have to take into consideration is you can start out that small and make it big. Uh, you don't have to have you know ten thousand dollars worth of equipment to record and blow the fuck up like it's it's you know this guy it yeah it's it's just a matter of the context and like you said he stirs the pot he he really he he brings in his takes and let's let's take delphi for instance he you know <clears throat> he's he's a little bit of a, on a high horse because of it <laughs> But but he brought up the controversy of M and K versus controller. And that rustled a lot of feathers. And I think it's just a matter of if you have the context and you stir the pot just a little bit, you can get that return. And people, if if it rustles their feathers enough, they 75% chance they're gonna comment on your video and say oh, well, I think it should be this way or, oh, you're wrong. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's just a matter of context and how much you want to stir the pot at that point. Do y'all know uh, Forrest Dump? He, uh, he's also a streamer on Kick. Forrest Dump? Yeah, have y'all heard of him? I don't think I've ever heard of him. Like he uh, he does he he mains Fortnite, so it might not be in like your guys' circle of everything. I mean, I like Fortnite. Mm-hmm. But um, his TikTok content is probably like one of my favorites to watch because he just purposely like mispronounces anything that he can. Oh yeah, he, he definitely that for a long while, and it he did. It definitely blew him up more too, because you were like, "That's not what that is." Or- yeah, it's it it's sometimes making a fool of yourself and knowing that you're wrong and doing it. it you mm-hmm. know, you're you know you're gonna rust. You know, you're gonna get under somebody's skin because there's so many perfectionists out there. So many people who got to be like, "No, that's mm-hmm. you're saying it wrong. It's this." You know, there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who feel the need that they have to correct someone and i think that's i think that's one thing that a lot of people you know are a little bit on the nose on it Mm -hmm. you know they 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 realize they're saying something wrong but they but they realize they're gonna get somebody to you know subconsciously be like oh i have to correct this guy you Mm -hmm. know it's just it's it's how you can just really affect someone and if they're willing to engage or not, which is why making that's that's a that's a type of quality content. Making that type of quality content, it, it resonates. I mean, it resonates with people if they're if they're pronouncing it wrong, and you know they're coming back and saying that's not how you say it. So it's mm-hmm. yeah, that's definitely a good that's a good example right there. I really I really like that. Mm-hmm. And the other question, this is more of like a, you know, for later questions. Um, it's been a long time since I've touched Premiere Pro. Would it, any of you be willing to help me relearn a little bit of that at any point? That, I, I am your guy. I am your guy. Um, we also, uh, just to point this out, um, if you want to get a head start on it, because I am in the midst of work, uh, creating the workshop for next week. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to head on over to the Triple Alliance uh, YouTube channel, we actually uh, have we actually have an Adobe Workshop video that is on there right now. Okay, okay, I will check that out. Yeah, it's just been a been a long time with that. I'm just trying to get back into it. Absolutely. Once you get that fire, what's up? What's up, T? What's up, T? This is my this is my big dilemma right now. The one that I've been trying to figure out. I've been doing research on it constantly. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah what's your opinion on niches? Niches? So, yeah, so like you said, by editing and bringing your personality into your edit, you'll find your own niche. Do you believe in niching down content? Like, so you say, oh, it's Timmy had like the separate channels. Do you believe in like the separate channels for different niches? Or do you think that the creator themselves is the niche? And they should just keep it as one channel. I honestly, when you get that big, you keep the niche in one channel. I, I feel like, like using it's Timmy as an example, it, you know, obviously he's big enough to do it, but in all honesty, he could just do it in one channel. He, he could well, literally, cause it, it separates so much of his content. So you don't know like how take, take somebody who doesn't know where to find his variety content, you know, take somebody who doesn't know how to look in the suggested channels where it's Timmy two is, you know, it, whenever it comes down to it, I think keeping all the content in one place is absolutely the best way to go. Cause you only have one place to look for it. How, how different is it's Timmy's variety content from like his apex? Obviously there's a difference like, uh, like a total 180 spectrum. I wouldn't say it's a one. I wouldn't say it's a one eighty spectrum because it's it's all gameplay still. So the the thing about it is it, is he's I I know he was started posting Valorant content on there, and I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know how you feel about Valorant. That game sucks. <laughs> You've got you got Tot near who used to you know have valorant as her pride and joy me and her both used to meme on that didn't we taught we don't talk about the dark days <laughs> no they refer to the dark days so we don't talk about that she's gonna be big. so but i was in the top two percent of valorant players last year there you go we talk about that but it's timmy too here's the thing about it is i don't know why he has two different channels because i'm looking at it right now and he's he's got a house tour and then apex 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 valorant a a lot of apex valorant valorant apex 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 valorant valorant apex valorant 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 so it, it's just i don't know what exactly his goals or intentions are with this second channel but i think a lot of the reason that a lot of people do these second channels as well is just to have something spam it's just spam that they know they can make money off of mm -hmm. so definitely with the bigger creators all right let me so timmy i mean timmy's gonna be gaming regardless because timmy's nuts at any game that he picks up and plays it doesn't matter mm -hmm. so i mean Obviously, his stuff is going to be close. So let's just take for we'll just put me in, for example, because I'm about to do it with my channel. And we're going to see how it goes, because I literally just put a video out about it a couple days ago, how I'm going to do this. So no matter if I'm posting streaming content, tech content, what I've normally been posting on there or which occasionally I've, you know, right, I've dropped little things here and there on my channel about it, but I'm also I'm literally going to post whatever the hell I want on mine, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be tech, lifestyle, streaming, dirt track racing. That's why I told you it's like a total 180 because mm -hmm. I video and like photograph dirt track racing, high school sports, like it ties into the same concept, but you see how it's like a total 180 spectrum. Exactly. So it's like, I don't, I don't know how people are going to respond to it yeah yeah that's well, and to cut like, in a really good example is tim the tap man so he has three channels mm -hmm. he has his main one for gaming he has another one that's for like reaction videos and then he has another one and i believe it's just like um I like I think it's more gameplay but it's like games that he doesn't really like play on stream per se um like he did like five nights at freddy's um he's been getting into siege lately which has been going on his main channel so like 
I think it, it's worth it, like, especially if you want to just get more content out there to explore, you know, like the dirt bikes and everything. If you want to make a separate channel that's focused on something other than gaming, then go for it. I don't want to. That's why I'm putting it on one channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough stuff to worry about. I don't want to put another channel out there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think even if it's a 180... You, you can definitely put it on the same channel. Uh, I think it's just all about how organized you are in your channel, too. Um, you know, because there's the playlist section for a reason. You you could honestly do, yeah, you know... I feel like I'm going to have to separate out my TikToks a little bit if I do start doing that. And actually yeah. Playlist. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've never made a playlist since I came out with a feature. Just mm -hmm. because I felt like my stuff was so fairly close. Like, I mean, I could have made a separate... Uh, a separate playlist for like all the project 50s that i did and had all those in there but i just never you know took the time to do it right mm. oh yeah any any other questions at all a different question about about quality with what you're talking about right yeah and i know quality comes from like you know the environment you have um, you know, behind your stream, because, you know, I, I've seen a couple of streamers where I've just gone in because they had something cool in their, you know, webcam background and all that. Mm -hmm. And so that's a question as well. Like, is that something that is important as well within, you know, creating something? Is, like, the environment you're in something that's important to have? Um, well, I think it's just a matter of I think it's a matter of more of just your personality than what you have in the background. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, I'm not, you not know, saying like the background matters more than anything, but like, yeah, you know, it no, shouldn't no, no. be like a complete dumpster fire behind you. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. having a, having a, you know, absolutely just destroyed room behind you is probably not the way to go with it. This but, is like my background for the most part. I've got it couple laptops and the sign oh, wow. from yeah um, from one of the games that I developed uh for one of my college classes. Oh cool cool yeah, yeah dude I honestly that's probably gotta be a really decent that's a really decent background. I mean there there's not really much I would change in it. Um sure. I mean if it's it's all about what you want your aesthetic to be at that mm -hmm. point. Like I'll just take me for example I here, I'll even turn on my camera. This is this is what people see behind me. This, mm -hmm. this is what people see behind me. Just a dark room. And yeah. I'll I'll just I'll just use this as an example. Last night I had 50 concurrent viewers on kick. Mm -hmm. And it was just it was just me gaming. So yeah. it's it's just a matter of of just you know putting your personality first and maybe mm -hmm. putting that background in second uh it, yeah. but it but it, it's also it, it's so hard to it's so hard to tell because i'm still trying to learn more about about that type of situation as well it because mm -hmm. there's a lot of streamers nowadays who have you know these rgb setups and have these cool gaming rooms yeah, well i would have I yeah, back, which yeah. Is T's, T's, T's setup is god tier. He has the best setup. Nobody could change my mind. I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and just blow up his ego for a little bit. So mm -hmm. <laughs> something to keep me happy. the wall on Apex. But but me, I I I live in a two two bedroom apartment, and sure. I let or well you know we just kind of decided to let Oreo have this other room over here for her setup. So that way mm -hmm. she can separate herself from her work because she works from home as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. <clears throat> any, any other questions at all? Um, no. Oh, one other question. Yeah. Um, 
So as far as, like I said, you know, quality over quantity, mm -hmm. there still has to be some minimum of quantity, right? Yeah. yeah. And for I... sure, because I, I was trying to, like, when I was kind of off, you know, off of streaming and just kind of gaming for fun and kind of just recording it, I would try to put out, like, at least one a week. But that got, you know, absolutely no traction because it definitely did not hit whatever algorithm it wanted to. Yeah, it's definitely... Have you so, seen, like, any trend with, like, how often anything should go with that? So, I think it's... I think if you've been posting once a week and you're just now getting back into it, I think the best thing you could do is just ease yourself back into it and start gradually posting more and more. So I'm going to go ahead and take T for example here. Mm -hmm. So his last three posts, he's got one from one hour ago, one from 11 hours ago. This weekend might be a bad example. <laughs> and one, one from one day ago, one from two days ago, one from three days ago. So posting once a day is still going to make you relevant, you know? All right. So easing back into posting once a day, you know, that that would probably help out your content, help your stream out, help you get an catch an audience. All right. Yeah, I mean, I really I didn't want to, you know, take the limelight away from Shane because this is kind of his workshops and stuff. Mm. That's why. I no, no, that. no, no. You're you know, you're much of, you know, you are much more of a content creation guru than I am, dude. As far as like posting, like we just talked about it in the staff VC this past week, cause we're trying to revitalize like all the socials with triple Alliance and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, we were talking about our schedule and stuff and they had really good plans for like what videos they wanted me to get out. And I'm like, guys, like it's not enough. Like we got to have at least one video a day. Um, one video a day to stay in the algorithm. Now what I'm doing this weekend is I'm in Utah right now, attending a creator workshop to know, you know, learn more about this industry and see if I can't figure out what the heck's going on in it. But mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty much just posting random stuff throughout this weekend too. I have my already scheduled post, but on top of it, I'm just going to be posting this random stuff. One thing that has helped me, which I mean, one video a day is a big burden whenever you're coming off of a break like that. And you've only been doing like one a week. Like that's going to be real mm -hmm. stressful. Just being like, oh man, I got to get a video out today. Um, one thing that helped me kind of get back into easing into that process is batch recording. It saved me so much time or batch editing if more of your style is like gameplay and recording or uh, editing from your recordings and the games that you play. If you can right start here. and literally <laughs> batch edit like seven videos and just have them sitting in your grasp and then you don't have to worry about them the rest of the week. You know you have a video for every day that week. Um, okay, okay. That was one thing that really helped me get back into at least just being on a consistent schedule. All right. And it's always better to post one a day for seven days than to post three TikToks a day for two days and then go on a hiatus for like four days and then post again. That just throws the algorithm all, all right. over. And so basically, you know, you're saying one a day and that's roughly like 30 seconds ish each depending on what kind of content 30 to 60 seconds is probably when we're talking about you know tiktok shorts and all and all of that it's so hard to tell right now because like tiktok went through a phase where they're they were starting or they were only pushing like seven second or less videos mm -hmm. everybody was pushing seven seconds or less because the watch time was high even if people swiped away, like if they swipe away instantly, that's still a two second watch time on a seven second video. Like it's still mm -hmm. good. Um, now apparently TikTok is pushing longer form content. That's why most of us, if not all of us now, maybe uh, have a 10 minute feature on TikTok and we can upload up to 10 minute videos, um, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of dumb in my opinion. I don't know if I would ever watch a 10 minute video on TikTok. I don't think I could do that. Maybe I will at some point, but um, it's just so hard to tell. It really does come down to kind of what type of content it is. As long as it's engaging, though, because everything, even if it's a long form video, everything is short form now. Like if you look yeah. at YouTubers like Mr. Beast, 
there is something going on in that video like every four to five seconds whether mm -hmm. it's a scene change whether it's a you know a um just a camera angle change a pop-up like something is going on so even if it's a long you know a longer TikTok 30 seconds you still got to think short and keep those people's attention span just engaged because i mean yeah. everybody's attention span is just the lowest it's been in history it's ridiculous yeah. <laughs> i feel like an old man from you know agreeing with that too i'm only so right now <laughs> youtube is like the biggest search engine behind google and that's what TikTok is trying to turn into Yep. Mm -hmm. trying to become the place where you go like they i think they did a study like most of the people are starting to get their news from tiktok mm -hmm. so like uh, happenings and stuff like that so that's what they're trying to do is make it as like a search engine so they're trying to make it more long-form content as well what i've done personally is like most of my videos are kept under 60 seconds except for this literally most recent one that i just filmed in this room it's like a two and a half minute TikTok that I'm going to try and play around with the, you know, the longer form TikToks and see if it does any better. Um, but most of my stuff is kept under 60 seconds for one main reason. And that's because I can take that TikTok and whenever it gets posted to TikTok, I can put that TikTok link into SnapTik, download that TikTok with no watermark. And then that can instantly go onto YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels and not be cropped out or anything because Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts are both. You know, Instagram Reels is a is that a minute and a half, Shane? Do you know? Instagram yeah. Reels is just a. Uh, I think it's just a minute still. Okay, I, I thought I, either that or YouTube Shorts might have up theirs to a minute and a half, but regardless. If they're both capped at a minute, that's why I kept everything under 60 seconds. Even though TikTok was allowing the longer form stuff, whenever I would go to put that onto another platform, well then now I gotta put it into another software, I gotta cut it down even more, put it into yeah. different parts. So I've just kept them all under 60 seconds, that way I can just repurpose them on every social platform that day. Alright, and that's, you said that was SnapTick? Yeah, I can send it over to you in a message. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. So yeah, so far. There are a lot of tools that I've like seen or heard about, and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I yeah, appreciate I use it literally daily. All right. And you said, so like, let's say, like, take a Sunday, like, evening, or whatever, and then, like, batch at it seven 60 second videos, basically. Oh, yeah. I, I, I need to correct myself. You, you are correct. They, they push the time up to 90 seconds on reels. Okay, so Instagram went up to 90 seconds, but I know YouTube shorts. I'm YouTube, YouTube, a minute. YouTube still a is still stuck at a minute. Yeah, I mean, it kind of sucks that they're all at different levels right now, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I went through a really bad spot and I still do it now because I mean, I'm, I'm newer to Triple Alliance and them letting me kind of control the socials too. So like, mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure out my time management between my personal stuff and their stuff that I have to do for them. Um, yeah. But my most stressful times have been whenever I wake up that day and I'm literally stressing all day. Like I'm scrolling through TikTok, looking through ideas. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I got to get a video out today. I got to figure out what topic I want to post it on. Well, then I got to sit down. I got to film it. I got to put that over, edit it. And I got to do that all today because I got to get a video out there. Whereas like... Yeah. I just have videos sitting in drafts if I'm scrolling through TikTok and I'm like, oh, that's cool. I can make a video of that. Well, then I could take, you know, that draft that I had saved for that day and I can push it off to the next week because I'm like, oh, I'll post this video today instead because I actually want to make this video. Whereas, you know, being stressed and almost forcing a video, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. And then the triple alliance that YouTube you were talking about for the editing stuff, right? Uh, is that, yeah. Is that just triple alliance for YouTube? Is that like the name of the channel? Or? Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's just triple alliance. We um, if you actually go, um, if you're if you type triple alliance three A, it comes up a lot better. Yeah, if you if you actually want to, we I believe we actually have a three oh, okay. A. If you if you actually scroll to 3A socials, 3A socials, yeah, that's where it is. If you go look at links, they actually have the YouTube right there, along with the various other links for Triple Alliance. All right, all right. 
Yeah, you because know, it's like for the longest time, like, and I feel stupid for saying this, but I didn't realize that Adobe had their like auto captions feature. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I was doing them all by hand. That made it. Oh yeah. Pay in the ass to edit anything. All right. Well, I appreciate it. No problem, man. Uh, happy you, happy. Oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say happy you had all those questions, man. I'm glad we were able to answer them. And uh, I appreciate it. Lisa. I always got all sorts of questions with this stuff. Yeah. Oh, one other question. Overlays <laughs> for, for your screen. Is that like, is that important? Does it make it harder to edit? Or like, you know, what's uh, the there? So I think... I think whenever you're wanting to do overlays, I think it's a matter mm-hmm. of what you want your stream to look like. Well, I got and like, I got real simple. Yeah. You know, that kind of square. I'm just trying to wonder, like, is that hard? Does that make it harder or like easier? Like, if I'm throwing that and like editing that positioning into um, like Adobe on that? No, like, it, that, it's after a border that, or, you know. So, so when editing in Adobe, you can actually crop out the border and just focus more on your camera than, than the uh, border that's around your camera. If you're worried about that being in your clips. Um, I'm not so, worried about it. I think it would be like a nice like natural break and maybe kind of like yeah. set aside sort of like a window even. Into yeah. Like me, like mm-hmm. hypothetically speaking. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it, it uh, just always just sit down and brainstorm on what you think would look good in your small form content uh, but in all reality i i used to do a bunch of borders and overlays on my streams and then mm-hmm. i realized that it just became way too cumbersome on having to having to make sure and monitor that they're all working right but then you also got to take into consideration having all those sources active is going to bog down your obs entirely and dumb your fps down on your stream so going going a much more simplistic route like having having some type of overlay or border to some extent is you know perfectly fine just to show your aesthetic what your personality pertains to you you know it just having that type of flair on there is perfectly fine um but overdoing it may kind of bog down your your stream and maybe get uh you know catching the audience's attention in my opinion yeah because i mean the other thing is i'm only on 50 megabit a second which really oh my uh my uh, streaming quality but luckily sometime in november i'm gonna go back to one gig Mm -hmm. so hopefully that'll fix it because i'm out in a wildwood area where it's like rural enough that there's like no internet service providers other than at&t yeah Uh, that kind of sucks i feel that (laughs) oh delphi while i have you here um you had asked me about doing the, the thumbnail trial thing. Did you have anything, or did you have anything you were wanting to work uh, we with? Can, that? We can talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. All right. That's good. Yeah, I'll, I'll think of some creative ideas. All right. Yeah, like I, said, I can't make any promises on it, but if you want me to take a crack at it, I can. Like yeah, I said, yeah, I'm still, still very new to that, and I'm taking my Adobe Photoshop certification class as we speak. Yeah, yeah, of course. Awesome, uh, awesome. I wanted to ask in case there was anything on that because I hadn't heard anything back from you yet. Yeah, yeah we could do that tomorrow. Like, uh, you'll see me in the productivity tab. So, if you guys have any questions, you guys can always come on in. Like, I'll always be working on something, but we'll set right. we'll some time. Yeah, I wasn't for sure about the channel permissions and what I was allowed to be in or not. Since I'm, you know, a little, a little if you number. if you see it, if you see any of those VCs and you see somebody in there and you just want to hang out, hop in there. It's right. we're we're always open to somebody joining. Yeah. All right, I just didn't want to intrude in case because I know productivity sounds like you know, oh meetings for like this kind of stuff. Either. Yeah. Oh, content and all that just sounds more 
Like, oh, this is real important stuff. We have hidden VCs that we always hop to. I mean, yeah. if we're right. in activity, we're usually working, but I mean, we'll always occasionally talk with each other. Or if we really need to get something done, we'll just be deaf in the channel. So, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, you know, I was just curious on where I was allowed to be and didn't want to intrude on anything for me. Well, You're allowed to be whatever you can see. You're allowed to be yeah. there. Alright. Yeah, no one's no one, job managing that stuff. Yeah, no one's gonna be like, get the fuck out. Delphi <laughs> 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 No. <laughs> if I if I'm streaming, I'll just lock the channel and I'll just be like, alright, cool. Because <laughs> 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 people have a chance to come in there and just start talking and I'm like, I'm in a fight, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> alright, alright. Alright, we'll see you. We'll see. Thank you guys. And like I said, I did find that that youtube channel so i'm gonna check that out really quick and see what i can come up with awesome awesome yeah we go really Thanks. in depth on there so just uh keep a close eye on all that we do on there and it, it'll it'll help you out so much with with creating your short form content all right well i appreciate it very much thank you guys no problem all right we'll see <laughs> all right any other questions anybody Going once, going twice. <laughs> Sold. No right <laughs> What's up, lucky girl? Oh, I was just saying no questions right now. I was just listening, taking in. I oh. You guys were <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right. Well, that concludes the workshop. I really appreciate everybody taking the time out of their day to coming in and hearing my insights on content creation. Jesus Christ, there was a fly in here. Are you really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I don't have anything else, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop out of here and eat because, God forbid, I'm hungry. <laughs> um, Do you still have to into that pizza? No, because I've been recording, too, so I'm just like, I'm not going to be eating in the recording. Like, I want to take in all... Funny. No, I'm not doing that. That's... <laughs> It's Means your editing good. skills aren't on par, so you can't edit yourself not eating. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> you just see me eating air. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I'm going to hop out of here, guys. You all have a great night, and uh, we'll be back with another workshop next week. Hopefully, we can cover some more insights to help you guys become content creators. See you. All right. Love you guys. I'm gonna See you guys. PC. Love y'all. Bye. Love, Love y'all. Bye. Bye. All righty. Everybody who's viewing this on the Triple Alliance channel, I appreciate everybody who clicked on this, took the time to listen to what we had to talk about. Um, we got a lot of knowledge in, got a lot of our opinions in on different takes for, for content and how it's approached. Um, if you like the video, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub. Uh, drop a comment if you want to put in your insights too on what you think is a better way to put in quality for your content. Um, in other words, we'll be back with another workshop. Uh, everybody have a great night. Take care and we will see you in the next one.